Before we move on in our study of forward kinematics, let's take a look at how what we know about rotation matrices applies to what we know about the kinematic diagrams. I'm showing here a complete kinematic diagram of an articulated manipulator. Now previously we've learned that a rotation matrix expresses the rotation between one frame and the next frame. Here because I have four frames I could find three different rotation matrices that express the rotation of one frame relative to the next frame. For example, I can find a rotation matrix that shows the rotation from frame 0 to frame 1. This is the kind of notation that we use to show which frame we are rotating into which other frame. So the rotation between frame 0 and frame 1 is shown like this, the rotation from 0 to frame 1. In order to create this rotation matrix, the first thing we do is we try to figure out how we could rotate frame 0 to match frame 1. We do this the same way we learned in the previous video. I first look to see if there are any axes that match between frame 0 and frame 1. Here I see that there is an axis that matches. Axis x0 is in the same direction as axis x1. I could get frame 0 to match frame 1 by rotating frame 0 90 degrees around the x0 axis. So to write this rotation matrix, I'll go get the standard matrix for a rotation around the x axis. And I'll plug in 90 degrees for theta. So this matrix will look like this. I'll use a C as a shorthand for cosine and I'll use an S as a shorthand for sine. So this means the cosine of 90 degrees and this means the sine of 90 degrees. Now I'm actually not done with this rotation matrix yet. The reason is because even though I've gotten frame 0 to match frame 1, there is another rotation between frame 0 and frame 1. That rotation is theta 1. I have to somehow account for the rotation of theta 1 in my rotation matrix, and here's how I do that. The rotation theta 1 is a rotation around the z-axis. And what I'm going to do to account for that is I'm going to take a rotation around the z-axis, I'll go get that matrix, and I'll multiply it by the matrix that I've already found. But there's kind of a trick here. I have to put this new rotation matrix on the left like this. Here's my standard rotation around the z-axis matrix. And then I'll put the matrix that I just found on the right. The reason why I had to put this rotation matrix for theta 1 on the left instead of multiplying it on the right is because the rotation theta 1 is a rotation around the original z-axis. That is the z-axis of frame 0 before frame 0 has been rotated to match frame 1. The last step I'm going to do here is I'm going to multiply these two matrices together. Now 
This is my final rotation matrix that expresses the rotation from frame 0 to frame 1. Notice that the actual numbers that make up this matrix will change based upon what the angle is of your first servo or the angle of your first joint. I'm going to take this rotation matrix from 0 to 1 and set it aside and we're going to find the rotation matrix now from frame 1 to frame 2. Okay, next we're going to find the rotation matrix from frame 1 to frame 2. The first thing that we do always when finding a rotation matrix is we try to see how we could make the frame we're coming from match the frame that we're going to. In this case, these two frames already match. So in that case, our rotation matrix is a kind of a matrix that's called the identity matrix. The identity matrix is the matrix version of the number 1. In other words, anything that you multiply by the identity matrix stays the same. And the identity matrix looks like this. It just has 1's down the diagonal and it has zeros everywhere else. And this matrix means no rotation. However, we're not done yet with the rotation matrix from 1 to 2 because here we also have the rotation theta 2 around the z axis. So we'll use the same trick that we used last time we'll go and get the Z rotation matrix and we'll multiply that on the left of the rotation matrix we already have. So we'll take the standard matrix for a rotation around Z and we'll plug in theta 2. And that matrix has to be multiplied on the left of the matrix we already have. So now the last thing we do is we go ahead and multiply these two matrices together. And we're done. We have the rotation matrix that expresses the rotation from frame 1 to frame 2. I'm going to keep this rotation matrix and I'm going to set it aside while we find the rotation matrix from 2 to 3. Alright, let's find the rotation matrix from frame 2 to frame 3. The first thing we do is we try to figure out how to get frame 2 to match frame 3. Here, once again, frame 2 already matches frame 3. So the rotation matrix that we get there is the identity matrix. But we're not done yet because we have the rotation theta 3 that affects the rotation between frame 2 and frame 3. So we have to account for that. The rotation theta 3 is around the z axis. So we go and get the standard rotation matrix for a z axis and we uh, left multiply it. And lastly, we do this multiplication. You'll notice that the result of my multiplication is the same as this rotation matrix. And that's because we're multiplying this rotation matrix by the identity matrix. And anytime you multiply a matrix times the identity matrix, you get the same thing out. So I'm now going to take my final rotation matrix between frame 2 and frame 3 and I'm going to put it up with my other rotation matrices. 
And it looks like we're done with the rotation matrices for this manipulator. We found the rotation from zero to one, the rotation from one to two, and the rotation from two to three, so we're done.